This is Charles Potts with his No Newt button on, reading from Slash and Burn. A happy little book that I did uh, many years ago with Robert McNeely with the help of Smokey Ferris. There's the cover of Slash and Burn. There are only a hundred copies of this in existence. That's one of the reasons we're putting it on YouTube for all of you people who can't afford the $400 tab. This book is dedicated to whom it may concern. First poem in the book is called The Pledge of a Grievance. You can see it's kind of bloody and red here. You know, this, anyway, The Pledge of a Grievance. I pledge a grievance to the flag of the Empire of the United States and to the people on which it stands, one nation, underfoot, with liberty and injustice for all. <clears throat> Many of you drive to work. This is called Sport Utility Poem. We're in trouble. Car trouble. America had a love affair with the automobile and got knocked up. Now these little metal bastards are everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, here's one, here's one you patriots will love. Geezers in space. The case for American exceptionalism, for John Glenn et al. All Americans are exceptional. Let them tell you. It was an exceptionally wide path God cleared for them through the exceptionally beautiful American wilderness over an exceptionally large number of dead Indians, creating the exceptional doctrine of manifest destiny, which manifests its destiny in their exceptional reluctance to acknowledge the exceptional scale of the genocide that is the bedrock of their exceptionality. The exceptionally rigid American Constitution has governed the United States for an exceptional length of time, disguising the plutocratic use of power as democracy exceptionally well. Look at all these exceptional immigrants ratifying these exceptional choices. The last thing anybody needs to know anything about is geriatric reactions in space. And so an exceptionally large amount of money was blown into space to discover the effect of weightlessness on mindlessness. The cameraman is smiling, and, and then it's if you patriots, uh, you know, there must be some of you who are still uh, strung out. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of beautiful pictures in here. Let's uh, let's take a look at that one, for instance. There's there's Kennewick man. That's a Robert McNeely painting. Kennewick man. Robert McNeely and I put this book together. I've known Robert McNeely for 50 years. So for all you theocrats <clears throat> in the audience, here is Easter surprise. Downwind of Christian capitalism, vile, loathsome smells of Boise Cascade's paper mill blow in on the wind from Wallula to foul up the thin and beautiful pagan fog of morning. People began worshiping the sun. Theology has gone downhill ever since. There are billions of people, Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, Republicans, who believe libraries full of fantasies for which there's not a shred of reproducible evidence. They meet in difficult to appreciate rooms full of noisy fools for whom one life on earth is not enough. That happy poem is going to be reprinted in the winter issue of the Malpais Review. Um, let's see, okay, there's two more poems here. Uh, just to show you that I'm a good sport uh, about politics, <clears throat> that is to say. This is called The Revised Book of Job. A salute to President Clinton, the greatest Republican president since Lincoln. I'd take a blowjob on my day job any day, even if my day job was to be the most powerful prick on the planet. When anybody asks if you've been getting or giving any blowjob on your day job, give them a snow job too. Better a blowjob than a hand job. There was nothing grand about that jury. 
happy byproduct later. There was, in fact, one Republican in the House of Misrepresentatives, Hastert of Indiana, who never committed provable adultery. Day job, blow job, hand job, snow job, the triumph of libido over the sad rack of power. You know, one of, one of those adulterers, I mean, like my, my friend Newt, 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 Newt. You know, uh, we gotta get some, somebody's gotta do something about Newt. You know, I don't think Romney's up to it, or up for it, or up uh, capable of it, or what do we gotta do here? I mean, uh, anyway, we, we, are, we are in an Italian restaurant in the Italian village of Walla Walla, founded about 150 years ago on the backs of some dead Indians, as we've talked about earlier. Uh, it's called Welcome to Walla Walla, tiny, Republican enclave in the desert, reluctantly giving it up, lot by lot, to a consortium of Italians who had it first, and Hispanics who'll get it next. So what am I doing here? Free Berkeley radical, lunch bucket liberal, capitalist poet, Marxist real estate broker, overweight hippie without a hot tub in the brutal summertime. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your brief introduction to Slash and Burn, Charles Potts and Robert McNeely.